Today, we're outside the beautiful Barnett Center. We're here with Compass. I'm here with Heather and Holly, and we're going to take a virtual tour of their facilities. So Heather, why are we doing this virtual tour today? Well, Bruce, we're doing it virtually so that we can stay safe still during COVID. We know that a lot of restrictions have lifted. However, we are a healthcare um, organization and we currently have patients in our building and we have throughout the entire renovation process. So safety is uh, key for us and we continue to follow regulations of OSHA for healthcare. So let's mask up and take a tour, huh? Yeah, yeah. Let's All right, let's mask do it. Up. So Heather, welcome us inside. Yes, thank you again for being here today at the Barnett Center. We're so excited to be able to finally show um, everybody who has given to this um, project in Queen Anne's County, the renovations, uh, a, a virtual tour. So we wanted to be able to show the, the public and all of our donors and our community um, everything that they have given to. Um, we are so excited. Uh, the facility turned out amazing thanks to our contractors and our architects and a lot of volunteers. Hey, I feel like I'm just in my living room. This is cool. Right. Yeah. And the original building was uh, done in 2007. And because of that, you know, things have really changed over the years. Um, and it was really kind of dated and dark, dark stained woods and dark paints and stuff. So one of our key things was to uh, make it more airy, make it more light um, and, and friendly and inviting. So that's why. Thank you. <laughs> so where are we heading first? We're going to go over to the um, hospice center side where okay. our um, patients' rooms are. We have uh, 10 private rooms here. Right here, uh, Kathy is on our phone. Kathy is one of our nurses. This is our nursing um, office area, nursing station, if you will. Um, and inside of those doors there is a med room with a state-of-the-art uh, medication dispensing system, which we had never had in the past. So that is also for safety and ability to count uh, medications in the appropriate way. So. Hey, that's awesome. Everything goes, and it flows great. It does. <laughs> yeah. It does. So are we going to get to head down the hallway? Sure. The if you want to head down that hallway right yeah, behind you. Sure. Lead the way. Okay. Okay. So the first thing that we'll take a look at is our bathing room. Uh, we do have a shower in here as well as the tub uh, for our patients to use. Okay. So Heather. Artwork. Mm -hmm. Yes. This yes. looks beautiful. Right. I so, recognize this name. Yes, yeah, Susan Hale. So Susan Hale is a local photographer, an artist in Queen Anne's County. She has lived here for a very long time with her husband, very involved in the chamber and other things within the community. And so we reached out to Susan to see if we could pick from some of her photography because we wanted it to be uh, artists from the Eastern Shore and also Eastern Shore landscapes and pictures. So you'll see throughout the tour that all of the photography in here is Susan Hale. Keep it local. Yes. I like it. I like it. Okay. Uh, we also have a new chapel. Uh, so you're, you're welcome to go in and take a look at the beautiful stained glass door that's our entryway. Oh, yes. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was actually um, made for us years and years ago before the, when the original building was done, mm -hmm. and it was the chapel door. And so our donor requested that it come with, so they took it out of the other door and inserted it in here, and, and we kept it. Yeah, and it works. It looks yeah. beautiful. Thank you. And right, then we'll actually just go right across the hall. Okay. Uh, this is one of our rooms. All of our rooms have been named after lighthouses in the area. Uh, so this is Concord Point. Each of our, of our patient uh, rooms is private and it has its own private bath and it's all of our rooms have a patio that are patio doors that open right out to a private patio. So are all the rooms relatively the same yes. uh, design wise? Yes. Mm -hmm. Some are a little larger than others. Um, just because the original building and then the footprint to, you know, do the renovations. Right. But basically, it's the same setup. And you say everyone has one that goes out to the garden. Mm -hmm, Can we see correct. that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So this is our garden area in the back of the building. Um, a lot, not all of the double doors come out to this area, but some of them do. So you'll see that there's just you know, quiet spaces back here. Each person has a patio and then comes around here. 
So the one thing I like, not only, because you are kind of tucked away back here on yes. Comet Drive, but even this facing, it's just scenic. It's yes. beautiful back here. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. If you want, we can go ahead and take you around to the back garden. Um, the really nice thing is that yeah. a lot of patients love looking out the horse farm that's right out these doors. Um, so they're the coveted rooms right now. <laughs> so while we're taking this jaunt over yeah. to our garden, can we talk about funding? Sure. Can we talk about how this is all possible? Yeah. Because this is a lot. Yes. So we underwent a capital campaign. We did for the original building and uh, gracious donors in the community gave 100% of that. So we did not have a mortgage on the building prior. Mm -hmm. And then we, um, for this campaign, we had to raise over $4 million to do the renovations. Um, so again, the community stepped up. Uh, you know, so significantly, um, not only Queen Anne's County residents this time, but also some Caroline and Kent County residents. We, we have approximately, uh, you know, a little bit more money to raise, um, but we are almost there at our, at our goal. But the, the most important thing too, is that people can still give to the campaign right. and designate it for that um, if you'd like to help out. But the ongoing operational um, expense to run a facility like this is significant. Mm -hmm. Our annual budget is about $7.6 million a year. And I don't think people think about that as a nonprofit organization. Right. Um, but we are a large nonprofit. We have about 100 employees staffed um, now. Um, so it does cost a lot and here at the facility it costs about $250 a day to care for a patient and we don't turn anybody away based on ability to pay. Mm -hmm. So some people are here for five and ten dollars a day. Some people can pay. We have a maximum of 200 of which we charge even though it costs um, 250 at least a day. Some people can afford that but a lot of people can't. Yeah. And so we don't turn anybody away but we have to fundraise 100 percent of that money. Right. So if you think of 10 people being in here every day at reduced rates it adds up. Yeah and what, what's an average day? Uh, lengthwise um it's about three months or less yeah uh for most people uh, unfortunately people wait too long to um accept hospice mm -hmm. oftentimes so we do have some shorter length of stays as well you know days to weeks right um but optimally somebody can be here for th for a three month period of right. time and three months at if someone's paying five right. instead of the 250. Yeah. Yes. So if people want to help, how do they get involved? Yeah, if people want to help, they can call our office at 443-262-4100. They can ask for myself or Kenda Leaguer, who's our development officer, who does our fundraising. Mm -hmm. um, or they can go on our website at www.compassregionalhospice.org. There you go. And donate on our giving page. Perfect. These are just lockers for our employees to put their personal belongings. So tell us the benefits of the kitchen. Obviously, a little bigger. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, um, it, it's a little bit bigger, but not really bigger than we had before. But the benefit really is, is that we had residential grade appliances prior. Mm -hmm. And residential grade appliances don't last when you're feeding six, ten yep. that many people and you're reusing those appliances over and over again. So everything in here is is commercial grade. Um, it also is um, has a nice flow to it. Um, Sean is our full-time um, cook here. She does our ordering and things so she feeds everybody um, and so I think Sean has said too that it's very nice. It's set up well. You know you don't have to go too far to get to anything. What's next? So we're back in the reception area. One thing we want to point out is when we, we used this building for many years and there was not a main entry point uh, for either the Hope or Healing side or our hospice center side. So we've actually formulated a brand new reception area. Um, so everybody comes in the same door, is screened by a receptionist, and then we have rating rooms for both sides of the building. Right, yeah, it looks perfect when we're outside. That's exactly mm -hmm. where you need to enter, that nice right. circle out front. Yes, not okay. confusing anymore. Yes. That's right. <laughs> so we'll show you guys our living room. We do oh, have sure. some family areas uh, for families who are here visiting. Uh, so feel free to walk in. Our, we have our living room. We have a dining room, so I guess people can come eat with uh, they can, family with members. They can, with their loved ones. Right. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what's what's on the side over here? Yeah, so there's a this is like a vending machine area or room for people to heat up food in a microwave, 
to uh, get a cup of coffee, to put their food in a refrigerator if they bring it, their right. drinks and such like that. So this is for the family to utilize as well. Gotcha. And then, of course, they can have their meal here. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So we have our waiting room? This is our Hope and Healing waiting area. Um, and please note over the sofa is a picture that was done at Camp New Dawn, which is our great oh, wow. camp yes. for children. Uh -huh. So the kids did that one, huh? Yes. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So now we'll go into our beautiful Hope and Healing Center. Okay. I guess that's behind our it camera? It is behind. Okay. Yeah. Lead the way. And again, this, the Hope and Healing Center side is for all of our grief services. And I just, as I mentioned earlier to Bruce, um, we just want to make sure that the community is aware that we do grief services for anybody who's experienced a loss. They don't have to have had our hospice services. So suicides, car accidents, opioid overdoses, any kind of traumatic loss or mm -hmm. unexpected loss or unexpected loss and you didn't have our hospice program. Um, we do individual counseling and group counseling and some alternative therapy work. And these are the rooms for that? Yes. Okay. We have three counseling rooms and we are, right now our staff are also doing sessions via Zoom. All right. So I think the last place we want to take you is upstairs to our children's room. All right, upstairs. All right. So all stuff done at Camp New Dawn? All stuff that was done at Camp New Dawn. And these Wonderful. painted uh, vans that the kids graffiti the vans with their feelings. That must be such a neat day. It like is. Like just it is cool. exploring your way you through. You all should a, come uh, uh, cover some of camp. Sure, sure. Yeah. What a cute room. Yes. So this is, I'll let Holly talk about our kids' room. Really cool, another volunteer. You know, we, we count on volunteers so much, mm -hmm. you know, to help with patient care and administrative things and, um, being at the front desk there to greet people, but this is another volunteer who did the artwork in here. So I'll let Holly talk to that. And it's based on this book, uh, The Dragonfly Door, uh, which Rhonda uses as well as her team uh, to do the grief counseling with children. So what would a typical day in here look like? Um, so it's not something, honestly, that's utilized every day. Right. Um, but typically they bring children in they like to do one child at a time, but mm -hmm. sometimes they can do families together. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. yep. And you'll see the walls, the, um, the paintings that the volunteer painted for us. A couple ladies did it. One was the, the, the main artist, but all of the bugs and the little <laughs> things that Holly's picking up, they're, it's magnetic paint. Right. And then you can move those around as they kind of interact and talk to the child because oftentimes Children aren't, don't even understand the loss or how they're feeling about right. the loss. And so through play therapy and things of this nature, they're really able to kind of not really focus that it's really about the child, but maybe it's about the caterpillar gotcha. and what the caterpillar becomes. That's deep. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> I know that the community eventually will come in once COVID lifts. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be doing some private touring of donors that have given specifically to the building um, in very smaller groups. Um, and as, as things lift, um, we may do something else, but we just we wanted to put this out virtually so that our community knew that this project was complete finally, even during COVID, and to make sure that everybody saw um, what an amazing um, building it became. And because of the, thanks to everybody who, who gave and continues to support our organization, it means the world to us. Yes, and everything looks great. Thank you so much for a wonderful tour. The building looks wonderful. And if you want more information, you go to compassregionalhospice.org and check it out. Yes, yes. Thanks Thank again. You. Thank you.